the Cube Speed. Uh, my name's Rich, and today we're going to be reviewing and installing our brilliant new short shifter uh, for the Gen 3 and Gen 4 Infinity. Um, so our goal was when we uh, developed the shifter was to come up with the absolute best shifter possible for this chassis, and we just know you're going to be absolutely blown away with the results. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, zoom a little bit in a little bit and give it a run through the gears just to show you how it all works. Okay, so starting off in first gear, and then back to second, and then third is really easy to push forward, don't even need to guide it. It's almost impossible to miss the uh, second or third upshift now. So back to fourth, through to fifth, sixth, and then for reverse, it's got a reverse lockout just like the factory shifter. So just push down and pull back in, in reverse. Um, so wow, that is just is just so nice to use. Um, so you can probably see that the uh, shifter throw is being reduced by about 30%. Uh, but what is so hard to show on video is just how nice this shifter is to use. Um, it's just now beautiful and solid and mechanical, um, and it's got next to no sloppiness at all. Um, and each gear is just like super well defined, so you can find each gear just really, really easily. And the second and the third upshift, so just showing it again. So just pushing it forward like that and you're just in third. It's just crazy. So now we're going to uh, pull this thing apart and uh, show you why it shifts so damn nice. Okay, so this is what you're going to receive in your kit uh, from Cube Speed. And on this side here, we've just got a uh, factory shifter as well, just for a comparison. Um, so just going through the components that you're going to receive in your kit uh, from Cube Speed. So firstly, we've got the uh, installation hardware, uh, and then we've got the reverse lockout plate. Uh, we've got the spacer plate. Uh, we've got the lower pivot washers, so these two here. Uh, and then, of course, like the, uh, the short shifter itself. Now, our short shifter uh, has a rubber insulated uh, lever, like in this section here. And the purpose of this is to reduce um, noise transfer and heat transfer to the interior of the car. Uh, so the shifter shaft itself, so this section here, is made of a 4140 steel, which is a very high strength steel. Um, so on our shifter, we've gone with a brand new pivot bush. So the pivot bush is this white section here. Uh, so our pivot bush is made like to very, very strict tolerances to remove all of the excess play uh, that, that you find like in the factory shifter. So it's hard to show on video, uh, but the factory uh, pivot bush is really, really quite loose. And uh, yeah, it's responsible for a lot of looseness with the factory shifter, whereas the cube speed one is uh, made to very tight tolerances and fits really firmly on the shifter. Okay, so then just moving on down to the uh, lower pivot of the shifter. So the lower pivot is this section here. Uh, now this section contains one of the other secrets as to why our short shifter works just so nicely. Um, so the factory shifter uh, uses uh, this, uh, this sleeve um, in, uh, in a plastic bushing. So, and with this uh, factory set up, it's really stiff and it creates a lot of binding when you're shifting gears. Um, but with the cube shifter, uh, we've gone with a dual bearing system. So we'll just show you show you what those bearings look like. So they're installed like in that in that lower pivot. So hopefully hopefully you can hopefully you can see that alright. So these um, so these dual bearings are supported uh, by these uh, special stainless steel washers. Um, so we'll just assemble it now just to just to show you how it all goes together, and and also what the difference is like compared to the factory shifter. So we'll just put one washer on and then the second washer on. So when you hold these two, two together on that lower pivot, um, the result is like a really super smooth uh, action because of the dual bearings, and there's absolutely zero free play in there as well. So, all right, so nextly, uh, we're just going to whip into the uh, install. Okay, so we're just gonna get started with the removal of our factory shifter. Uh, so the first thing you do is just undo this bolt on the uh, lower pivot so we'll just um yeah speed through this section and 
and then just remove the uh, the reverse lockout plate. So again, uh, we'll speed through this as well. So then the whole uh, shifter assembly will just pull out like that. Um, and we're gonna keep this uh, spring, which uh, you use for the reverse lockout. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead with the assembly of the new cube speed shifter. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do is just give this, uh, give this shifter housing just a nice clean out. Uh, just make sure there's no burrs or anything on there. Uh, and then just give it a smear, just like with a, uh, with a wheel bearing grease or something similar to that. Um, and then you just need to reinstall the uh, factory uh, reverse uh, lockout spring. So we're going to reuse that one. And then install the, uh, the cube speed short shifter. Um, so you'll see on the, uh, on the pivot bush here. Um, so there's a key here and then there's a, and then there's a keyway. Uh, so that's the way that you line it up in the, sh in the shifter housing. So we'll just sit there like that for now. And then the next piece to put on is the uh, spacer plate. So the spacer plate is orientated the way that I'm showing it there. And then, and then the reverse lockout plate. So putting the reverse lockout plate on top. So I need to push against the push against the spring here. So it can be like a little bit tricky just to do this with um, to do this with one hand. So we just line that up and then just put in the put in the bolts just finger tight just for now. Yeah, so we're not going to do these up too tight yet um, because we need to uh, uh, we're going to need to adjust this reverse lockout plate. Which is on a which is on a slide. So, uh, but the next bit we're going to do um, is install the uh, the washers, which go either side, which go the side of the uh, the dual bearings. So they just go on the bottom of the bottom of the lever here. So they just snap into place. So you can see that ridge there. That ridge faces towards the inside uh, where the bearing is. And then just using the supplied bolt. I'm um, screw that together. And at this stage, uh, yeah, we can we can do this up lot like factory, you know, we can do this up super tight, lots like of the uh, to whatever the factory specs might happen to be. We just do them up, you know, really nice and tight like that. You're not going to make it bind uh, because we've got the uh, got the dual bearings in there. All right, so now we can install the uh, the shifter lever. So we're just going to start by just installing the uh, the lock nut or jam nut. So we're going to screw that all the way down in this case. And then your upper sh shifter lever actually comes in two parts like this. Uh, so this is the part that's got the uh, the rubber insulator in it. So you just need to screw these together. Uh, the only thing we'd say is just on this thread here is definitely use like a medium strength uh, thread locker on there uh, just to prevent it from unwinding. So, um, so we'll just screw that together. And then obviously screws on the lower lever. So there is some degree like of height adjustability. Um, so if, if you screw the lever, if you screw this upper lever right down, you end up in effectively like the factory kind of shifter height. Uh, but if you want to make it like a little bit taller, you know, so like it's a little bit less reach for the driver, um, you can you can wind this lever up a bit and then and then um, yeah lock it off with the lock nut underneath. The only the only thing that we would say is is to make sure that this uh, upper lever screws onto the lower lever by at least 20 mil, if not like 25 mil, uh, before you put the before you do the lock nut up. Up underneath to secure it so we'll just put that together now
We just lock that off. Okay, and then we're going to install one of our super sexy cube speed gear knobs. So these don't come with a kit, but they're yeah available separately. So we'll just put that on. And you line up the logo and then just um, do up the lock nut, lock nut underneath. Yep, beautiful, just like that. Um, so now we're going to just move on to uh, the reverse lockout process. Okay, so now we're going to set up the uh, reverse lockout. Um, so as we were showing before, like this, uh, the reverse lockout plate, like the, like the factory one, uh, slides backwards and forwards like that but due to the due to the slots in that um, in that lockout plate. Um, so it's important to spend some time like to, to get this right. Um, because the lockout plate not only prevents you from going into reverse when you're uh, trying to go into six, but it also uh, provides a guide as well, like to guide the lever into fifth gear and sixth gear. Um, so the easiest way we found to set it up is to uh, is to start with the plate loose, and then and then find fifth gear, and then slide the plate so it just touches um, the reverse lockout pin and then slide it back a little bit and then and then do the plate up N not not super firm but just um yeah yeah medium i guess because we're because we're still probably going to need to do some adjustments you can usually get away with just doing up like two of the bolts as well okay so the first thing you do is just to make sure you can still get fifth so, and in this case, um, it's not quite not quite working properly. So we're just going to need to slide the plate a little bit, a little bit to the left. So we just slide it a little bit to the left there. Do it up again. So now we'll see if we can get fifth. We can get sixth easily, and the uh, plate's guiding it nice and easily into those gears as well. So next to check to make sure if we can get reverse. So to get reverse, um, this uh, reverse lockout pin needs to go underneath underneath this uh, the lockout plate. So if you push down lock like that, so we've gone underneath the lockout plate, and now we can now we can get reverse. So it might take a little bit of mucking around with, lot to to get it right, uh, but it's really worth spending some time on this process to get it like a hundred percent. So. Um, so once that's done, you can just do up the, uh, the lockout plate lot nice and firm. And then, um, yeah, I would test it all through the gears again. Make sure, especially fifth and sixth, and make sure reverse is engaging nice and easily as well. Okay, well that's it for this video. Um, yeah, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to get in touch with us, uh, either on our YouTube channel, our socials, or of course our websites. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember to get out there, shift some gears, have some fun, and we'll catch you again next time. Thank you very much for watching.